This video will introduce you to pivot tables in Excel 2007. It will cover the importance of good starting data, the pivot table interface, and how to make a pivot table. A pivot table takes a large amount of flat data organized in rows and columns where data is often repeated in a column and summarizes it very quickly. Before creating your pivot table, it is important to take a good look at your starting data. Here we have a salesperson, the country the sale was in, the order amount, the date of the order, and the type of product that the salesperson sold. There are several requirements for your starting data before you make a pivot table. The first row of your starting data must have column headers. You can have no completely blank rows or columns in your data. Each column must contain only one kind of data. For example, you can't have text in a column that contains dates. You should not have any typos in your data. The auto filter will help you check for typos. If I click inside my data, and then on the home tab of the ribbon, click on the sort and filter button, and select filter, this turns on the auto filter. Notice that each of the column headers now has a drop down arrow. If I click on the drop down arrow, I can see each unique entry in the column. When I look at the salesperson, I can see I have Buchanan, Callahan, Davolio, but when I go down to Fuller, I can see that I have two entries for Fuller, one spelled with two R's. I know that I only have one Fuller, and that Fuller is spelled with one R, so Fuller with two R's is a typo. If we look at a pivot table based on this data, you can see how the typo makes our summarization incorrect. Here I have the sales for Fuller, and here Fuller spelled with two R's is considered a different person, so this $1,200 sale is not included in Fuller's total. I can fix this by bringing up Fuller's entry, I'll uncheck Select All, and then check the box for Fuller spelled with two R's, and click OK. Now I can correct this entry and clear the filter, and now I can see that I only have one listing for Fuller. To make the pivot table, I'll click somewhere inside my continuous data, go to the Insert tab, click on the bottom portion of the Pivot Table button, and select Pivot Table. Because I had clicked inside my continuous data, Excel automatically selected my data for the pivot table. If Excel had not selected my data correctly, I could click and drag over my data to select it. Next, you have to choose where you want the pivot table to be placed. You can place it in a new worksheet or an existing worksheet. If you place it in an existing worksheet, be sure to place it in row 3 or below, or you'll lose some functionality in your pivot table. I'm going to select New Worksheet and click OK. Once you have started your pivot table, this is what you will see. This is the pivot table area where your data will be displayed. This is the pivot table field list. Notice that the fields you see listed on the left are the same as the column headers in your spreadsheet. You'll see that on the ribbon you have a pivot table tools section that has two extra tabs that contain tools only for pivot tables. The Options tab has tools that you'll use while building your pivot table. If you ever accidentally turn off the field list, just click on the field list button on the Options tab of the ribbon to bring it back. On the Design tab of the ribbon, you'll find tools that will help you change how your pivot table looks. Now we're ready to start adding data to our pivot table. First thing we need to do is look at the pivot table field list. If you put one of your field 
labels in the row labels section. That data will be shown vertically down the side of your pivot table. If you put a field in your column labels, that data will be shown horizontally across the top of your table. The values field summarizes the data in that field. It is where the calculations are done. The first thing you need to do before you add data to your pivot table is to figure out what you need to know. In this case, I would like to know how much each salesperson sold. There are a few different ways you can add data to your pivot table, and we'll go over each of them. First, you can check the box to the left of the field you want to add to the table. If the field contains text, Excel will automatically add it to the row fields. If the field contains numbers, it will automatically be added to the values field. Because I want to see the orders for each salesperson individually, I'll add salesperson to the rows field by just checking the box. To see the amount each salesperson sold, I'll add order amount to the values field. Because order amount contains numbers, when I check the box, it will automatically be added to the values field. Now I can see each salesperson and the total amount that they sold. I'd like to see the order totals broken down by product for each salesperson. To do this, I could check the box for product. But you can also drag fields around and add them to different label areas. So I can click on product type and drag it to the row labels. Now I can see each salesperson, how much hardware they sold, how much software they sold, and the total amount that they sold. Let's say that I would like to see the product type listed before the salesperson. I can click on product type in the row labels and select move up. Now I see the product type and then each salesperson and how much they sold at that time. But let's say that I want for each product type to have its own column. I can move product type to the column labels. I could click and drag it up to column labels but I can also click on it in the Row Labels field and select Move to Column Labels. Now I can see each salesperson in their own row, and I can see their hardware and software sales summarized in columns. Let's say I also wanted to see the breakdowns for each country. I could add country to the Row Labels by clicking and dragging it there. If I want to move it above salesperson, I can click and drag it above salesperson. Another thing that I could do is drag country up to the report filter field. If I click on the arrow in the report filter section, I can select to see the sales for only one country. So if I select Canada and click OK, now I'm only seeing the sales for Canada. If I click on the button again, I can select to see all and click OK. And now I'm seeing the sales for all countries. If you click on select multiple items, you can use check boxes to select which items you want to see. I only want to see sales in Canada and the USA, so I'll uncheck the box for UK and click OK. To view all of my sales again, I'll click on the filter button and check the box for all and click OK. This was an introduction to creating a pivot table and adding data to it. Thank you for watching.